I got this Dell Optiplex 790 for only $20, but what can it do? Let's find out. I occasionally find older computers, such as this one, and I've always enjoyed taking something that might be on its way to the landfill, or even already in the trash, and seeing what ways it might be able to be repurposed and how well it performs. Hence the name landfill to land. So what's in this Optiplex 790, and what all can it do? Well before we get to that, I want to take just a minute to talk about the sponsor of today's video, NordPass. Keeping track of all your random passwords can be a hassle. And when trying to work with a team, it can be even harder. But it doesn't have to be thanks to NordPass. NordPass is a top-rated password manager that can help you stay organized, secure, and stress-free, especially when sharing accounts with family members or coworkers. With secure password sharing, you can safely share your login credentials with other team members without having to worry about data security. This feature allows you to give the right access to the right people so you can keep your passwords organized and secure. It's perfect for teams and businesses of all sizes. Speaking of which, NordPass actually offers a business plan that includes features like user management and Google SSO, so you can easily manage your team's passwords and streamline your business's security. So if you're tired of struggling to keep track of all your passwords, especially when working with others, give NordPass a shot. Right now you can get a special deal on two years of NordPass plus one month for free by going to nordpass.com slash hardwarehaven or by using the code hardwarehaven at checkout. Or if you do run a business, you can get a three month free trial for a business account by using code hardwarehavenbusiness. Step up your online security and get signed up with NordPass today. As I said earlier, I paid $20 for this Optiplex 790, which is a solid deal, but you can definitely find these on eBay or local selling sites for not much more. This one includes a four core Sandy Bridge i5-2400, which is clocked at 3.1 gigahertz with a boost clock of 3.4 gigahertz. This SKU launched in 2011, meaning it's well over 10 years old, which it's kind of crazy. I mean, it doesn't seem that old to me, but the 32 nanometer Sandy Bridge node and 95 watt TDP are pretty telling. This system only came with two two gigabyte sticks of DDR3 memory, so four gigabytes total, as well as a 250 gigabyte three and a half inch hard drive, a five and a quarter inch DVD drive, and a 250 watt proprietary power supply. I feel pretty confident that this system will be a solid desktop PC and maybe even handle some light games pretty well. But with the dated architecture and 95 watt TDP, I'm concerned about it being very useful or efficient in any sort of server use case. Before we get into all that though, it's time to go ahead and get this cleaned up. After getting rid of most of the big dust outside, I started trying to disassemble everything but that proved to be a little bit more difficult than I was expecting because of the nature of the case. Eventually, I got it sorted out and was able to get the power supply and motherboard out of the case. Unfortunately, I found some of this on the bottom of the motherboard. With the motherboard out, I went ahead and took off the CPU cooler to reveal some really old paste and our i5-2400. I used a small paintbrush to clean up the dust off the motherboard and then tried to get all of the thermal paste off the cooler and clean up some of the rest of the components as well. For the case, I just used some isopropyl alcohol, a rag, and that small paintbrush to get all the dust out and for the most part it worked out okay. Little tip, you can use some ice purple alcohol and a coffee filter to get rid of stickers like this pretty easily. 
One of the feet was missing off of the flat side of the case, so I took one from the short side and popped it in to make sure it would sit evenly while sitting flat, which is the form factor that I sort of like. Once that was done, I got everything back in the case, and I feel like it was looking pretty good. For testing Windows, I actually dropped in an SSD to avoid having to install and run Windows off of the spinning hard drive. And yes, I know this would run better on Linux. I've explained many times why, for these videos, I use Windows. But hey, if you really want to leave that comment, go for it. Maybe even uh, like the video and subscribe while you're down there. It should be no surprise that the 4-core i5-2400 handled Windows and basic tasks with no issue. So let's move on to a few basic benchmarks, starting with PC Mark 10. Here, the Optiplex 790 scored 5980 in the Essentials category and 4186 in productivity. In Cinebench R15, it managed a 3-run average of 432, and in Cinebench R23, a multi-core score of 2268. The performance wasn't too bad, but it definitely wasn't the most efficient. The Optiplex pulled 32 watts from the wall at idle and 98 watts while running Cinebench. If you compare that to something like the Lenovo E83 build I did a while back with a 4th gen 1231v3, the i5-2400 doesn't look too great. The Xeon 1231v3 system drew right around the same amount of power from the wall, but that system had a GTX 1650 in it and also performed substantially better in every benchmark. This makes sense with the CPU being a higher clocked 4-core 8-thread chip and the system also having that GTX 1650 and 16GB of RAM, but this sort of just goes to show how much Intel CPUs have improved in terms of efficiency from Sandy Bridge to Ivy Bridge and then Haswell. To give this system a bit more of a chance, especially with some games later on, I tossed in two more sticks of DDR3 memory to bring the total to 8GB, and I also dropped in the NVIDIA Quadro K1200. Obviously that's not the best choice for gaming, but it was unfortunately the best low profile card I had on hand, and I didn't have time to pull everything back out of the case and then slot something in, I, yeah, I gotta get these videos made at some point. With those upgrades, there was a small uptick in PC Mark 10 performance, and it also let us run the content benchmark where the 790 got a score of 2758. For some budget gaming tests, I figured Rocket League was a good place to start, and I was pleasantly surprised to see that with the low preset, it managed to get a very solid average of 160 FPS and a 1% low of above 60. The gameplay was very smooth, and the GPU is clearly the limiting factor here, and in most of the future game tests. I'm not Gamers Nexus, guys. Another game I wish I had more time to play is Deep Rock Galactic, and the i5-2400 had no issues here either, with an average of 118 and 1% lows of 85 frames per second. To try something a little bit more CPU demanding, I tried Minecraft, but the current launcher seems to just not work for me, so cool. Thanks, Microsoft. Instead, I went ahead and gave CSGO a shot, and here we're still mostly GPU limited, but the system managed to average over 200 frames per second with a 1% low of 111. The 0.1% low might have been from jumping to the start menu or something because I never noticed any hitches or anything like that 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 0.1% low might indicate. So for budget esports gaming, the i5-2400 can still hold its own, even after being over a decade old. Last, I decided to give Fallout 4 a shot, and at 720p on the lowest settings, the Optiplex managed to hit the frame cap of 60 frames per second on average, with respectable 1% lows of only 44. And we're still very much GPU limited. But the i5-2400 impressed me a bit here, and depending on the games, it can still hold its own if you're looking for 60 frames per second. Obviously, this wasn't a great gaming test suite, you know, with the whole being GPU limited thing and not testing any modern games, but hey, this isn't really a gaming channel, and I like to do a lot of other things, like stream games with Parsec. And streaming games with Parsec is something this PC just couldn't really do. While the Intel HD 2000 integrated GPU technically has hardware decoding, it's not supported by Parsec, so we were stuck relying on software decode. This wasn't too bad on just a desktop, but when trying to play games, the latency made it pretty much unplayable. Since the i5 is listed as having Intel QuickSync, I decided to give hardware transcoding a shot by installing and running a Jellyfin server. 
But even after tinkering with some of the settings and trying both QuickSync and the VA API transcoding options, I could never get it to work and kept getting this error anytime I tried transcoding. I'm pretty sure that Jellyfin just doesn't have support for this older CPU, so I thought I would try out some other software and gave hardware transcoding another shot in OBS. And same issue. After some Googling, I decided to go out on a limb and install some drivers from Intel's website, which technically only show support through Windows 8.1, but I figured, hey, why not? And lo and behold, I actually got transcoding to work in OBS, although the quality wasn't too amazing. But at that point, I was excited and decided to give Jellyfin another go, but with the outdated, updated driver, updated, outdated drivers, I'm not really sure, I actually couldn't get anything to stream at all. Somewhat ironically, I have plans for completely overhauling the system into a home media workhorse, so make sure you get subscribed and don't miss that. While transcoding wasn't much of an option, the CPU could definitely handle a lot of other common home server tasks, but the big issue here is the power draw. These Sandy Bridge CPUs were a great bang for your buck for performance for quite some time, and still do a solid job for a lot of things. But the older lithography and architecture means that you might see a significant bump in your electricity bill if you want to run something like this 24-7. Even if your electricity costs are pretty low, you can often find Optiplex systems with 4th or even 6th gen Intel CPUs for not a ton more if you're patient and find a good deal on an auction. These systems are going to be way more efficient. I'm still really glad that I got this system, and I definitely plan to find it a working home somewhere, just maybe not running 24-7. I do find this form factor pretty interesting, and like I said earlier, I'm working on a follow-up video right now where I'll be pushing the limits of this Optiplex, I guess you could say. So stay tuned for that. Don't forget that you can head down to the description to get an exclusive deal on NordPass, plus one month for free by using code HARDWAREHAVEN or you can get three months for free on a business account with Hardware Haven Business. That's about it for this one though. So as always, thank you so much for watching, stay curious, and I can't wait to see you in the next one. And it also let us run the content benchmark. <laughs>